And so I thought, what better way than to do a writing challenge? <laughs> My name is Leah, if this is your first video, or if you forgot, because it's been several months. 2023 so far for me has sort of been comprised of not writing. I have been working hard, as you saw in my last few videos, on starting a crochet business, but I miss making videos about writing. And of course the writing part. That's you know, the most important aspect of all of this, but trying to sort of shift into a dual focus for this channel just didn't feel right once I actually put it into practice. Now that I'm in a place where my business has been established, we are on a good upward trajectory. I can give an update about that at some point if you guys are interested, but I've gotten through the bulk of the stress <laughs> that has come with starting that, and now I have a lot more mental space to actually be thinking about writing again. I thought I could do both of those things at the same time. I was very wrong. I lost like my, all of my creative drive because I was just so busy. <laughs> with a lot of crochet things. But since things have calmed down, my brain space has opened up a little bit more, and of course the first thing that grabbed hold of my attention was a new story idea. And so I thought what better way to sort of make my return to YouTube, to make my return to writing, than to do a writing challenge. This is not going to be a super intensive one, this is not going to be one where I'm trying to push myself to my limit or like discover a new method or something like that. Basically, what I'm wanting to do with this is give myself some reasonable deadlines, gamify the experience a little bit, and provide like a sort of structure to me going into this process just to kind of get my feet warmed up a little bit, if that makes sense. So. The challenge. The idea that I had is a middle grade, and I'm sure that I will share more about kind of what the vibes are for this, but the gist of it right now is that I kind of want to write a parody of sort of that sports genre where it's like the new young kid comes into town and meets the old mentor who uh, gave up his title or his, his uh, fame of the how great he was in this particular thing like so so long ago and now he's sort of like jaded and, and grumpy about the world and, and this new kid comes and needs to learn and so the mentor teaches him and together you know they go and the kid wins the tournament and you know that genre. I want to do a parody of that for middle grade in book form. That's the quick pitch. And the challenge is going to be that I want to finish a zero draft of that book in two months. Now I know this is doable. I know this is doable because uh, it's middle grade. It's gonna be shorter than any other book that I've ever written. But the main reason I want to sort of condense this experience is also I just like want to dive head in. Like, I want this to be the main thing I'm thinking about over the next two months. So this week I'm gonna be coming up with some more details of that. I'm gonna bring you along as I sort of make this challenge for myself and sort of get the prep work done. I'm gonna make a schedule for the challenge so that I can kind of have some guideposts along the line, do some research. Obviously if this is gonna be a parody story, then I need to know the original genre really well. So I need to watch the movies. I'm not probably going to read any specific books in the genre, but I'm thinking I'm just gonna watch some movies um, in this genre, because I feel like this is primarily a film genre anyways. I'm gonna read some craft books, just sort of gather, gather some things to help sort of spark my inspiration, but then also very specifically help me in researching how to like craft the structure of this story. That's what I'm gonna be working on this week. I already have mapped out that this is gonna be like a five video series. Next episode in this little series is going to be about outlining, and then the last three are all gonna be writing vlogs as I attempt to implement my story in a zero draft. And if I, if I do this successfully, this will be the first zero draft I've finished in a while. This one's like fresh idea, new words on the paper, like pure zero draft, which 
I think will also help me sort of relieve the pressure of the sort of fear that comes along with having not written in so long. I'm excited to write more of a bubbly, fun, middle grade voice as well in something that's just a little bit more lighthearted that I can just have fun with. I need a project that's just going to like reopen the world of writing in a very fun, entertaining way. And I think this is exactly the project that will do that for me. Okay, here's how the schedule is going to work. First, I figured out what my ideal total word count would be, which I think is gonna be around 50,000 for this book. Since I'm an underwriter, I brought that down to about 39,000 as my goal for this draft, which divides out to 6,500 words per week over six weeks. So working backwards from that, that means I have one week to do some research, two weeks to brainstorm and write an outline, and then the last six weeks of this challenge will be dedicated to writing the zero draft. For the past two days, I have been researching some stories that sort of relate to the structure that I wanna do for this middle grade book. I've got my research week um, from college <laughs> t-shirt on, completely by accident, actually. I've been having a really good time. The two movies that I've watched so far are The Karate Kid, the 1980 something version and Kung Fu Panda. Kind of a coincidence that they're both about martial arts, but they both kind of have that inexperienced person is trained by a mentor and becomes really good at thing in the end arc that I wanted to sort of analyze a little bit. And I've made some interesting observations so far. Nothing that has sparked like specific scene ideas for the book because I do have, you know, some ideas that I'm floating around and, and some ideas of what like beats those those things would sort of line up with. But it has helped highlight some things that were missing um, that I hadn't quite considered yet. I mean, I haven't really started outlining and so a lot of this is very rough in my head at the moment. It was cool to like sort of see the holes already and just sort of note like, all right, this is something I'm definitely gonna need to think about whenever I get to the actual brainstorming and outlining phase. It sort of helps me feel a little bit more confident that I have a roadmap and I a, a good plan in how to make like a good cohesive story. So yeah, that's what I got so far. I'm thinking about watching Rocky next, um, sort of that same type of mentor trains, mentee arc. Something I'd like to find but haven't is a movie about the from the mentor's perspective though all of these like sort of movies have been following the mentee's perspective which makes sense because in a sense that is the that's the person who's going through the most growth in this process they're literally growing that's the whole point but in the way that i want to write this book the POV character would be the mentor in some ways. They would also be the mentee in some ways, and I think that going through this exercise and sort of realizing why there are so many stories from the mentee's perspective and the change that they automatically go through um, has had me thinking more about, you know, while I'm sort of riffing on that sort of arc structure and my main character is meant to be the mentor in, in this sort of swapped um, version of this that I'm going to be doing. I do sort of need to make them a mentee in some ways because that's going to be really what the driving force of the novel is going to be is their change and so I just need to think about how to do that and how specifically I want to make that happen in the book, which will come in the brainstorming outlining phase. I'm just sort of noting that for now as a, not red flag, but like a little yellow flag of like, hey, here's something you need to think about. And so today, I thought I would sort of walk you through sort of my process, what I'm noting, 
how I'm doing this, etc. So I'm gonna share with you my breakdown for Kung Fu Panda because that one, in terms of tone at least, is the most similar to uh, the story that I wanna write. And then after that, I will wrap up with some observations that I've made in comparing all three of these movies. So. Here's my story breakdown for the 2008 masterpiece, Kung Fu Panda. The first thing I do is watch the movie. Wow, crazy, I know. What a, what a crazy concept. But what I'm doing when I, when I do this is I'm not just watching it to like be entertained. I'm watching it so that I can basically write down every single scene that happens and what like the main thing is that happens in that scene. Maybe that's a bit of external plot, but I'm really sort of digging into how did this scene move the story forward and what like new information did we get about the plot, the stakes, the characters, etc. I'm not going to go too in depth about every single scene and all the notes that I made for them, but just to give you a little sampler of how I did this, in what I have for scene one, I say that Poe tells the story of a legendary warrior who he imagines as himself. He wants love and respect. The vision is interrupted by dad saying he's late for work. Room is filled with furious five paraphernalia, but he can't get up. So that is step one, and that's a very quick summary of step one but it is probably the step that takes the longest because you're having to watch the entire movie and sort of take some pauses in between to like write out your notes. But after I have every single scene summarized basically in my little list of scenes, I then try to break down the movie in a Save the Cat beat sheet. So this is my preferred structured method to use. I just find that it's a good skeleton for me that doesn't feel too restrictive, but also gives me some like guideposts to see what's happening. So if you use something different, then maybe at this point you would be trying to break down the story in whatever structure method that you use if you are an outliner, if you are a plotter of any sort. And if you're a pantser, I think doing something like this is still worthwhile, even if you're not plotting your own book. Doing some breakdowns like this could be helpful in just getting a picture of what the structure of this type of story would look like in your head and then that can maybe help it be easier as you go into drafting without an outline. So for my Kung Fu Panda breakdown, so the opening image is the scene that we just talked about. Uh, Poe is uncoordinated and nothing like the dream he had of himself as a Kung Fu master. In the setup we learn that Poe is the son of a noodle maker who idolizes the Furious Five. Um, also that he doesn't believe in his own dreams. We get the theme stated from his dad in the middle of the setup, and that is we all have our place in the universe. The catalyst I noted was that Ugwe has a vision of Tai Lung's return. In the debate, there's sort of two questions happening here. One is who will be the dragon warrior? And the other question for Poe specifically is how is he going to get into the Jade Palace to watch the tryouts? Then we see the break into two in which Poe finally is able to get in. He lands in front of Ugwe's finger as he's pointing to pick the dragon warrior and Poe is the dragon warrior. This is our break into two. The B story to me was the Poe and Shifu mentorship relationship. Through the fun and games section, this was a downward path in this story, so Shifu and the five try to get Poe to quit, but he refuses. He's not learning Kung Fu, and the five who he idolizes hate him. By the midpoint, we have a false defeat, which goes with the downward path. Ugwe disappears, so their main source of guidance is gone, and Poe finally learns that he is the one who is meant to defeat Tai Lung, and that scares him because he does not believe he is able to do that. For the bad guys close in, this felt like an upward path to me, which again makes sense with it being the mirror of the downward path of the fun and games. Shifu realizes that Poe is motivated by food, and so he uses food to train him. In a final scene after like the training montage, they fight over the last dumpling, and Poe wins against Shifu, but it actually gives the dumpling to Shifu instead, saying that he's not hungry, which is big character development for him, that he's focused on what he needs to do. Also in this section, the five intercept Tai Lung and are defeated in a fight with them, which sort of leads us into the Ollie's last beat. Shifu is finally like, all right, Poe, you get to read the Dragon Scroll. This is the thing that holds the key to the Dragon Warrior's power, and Poe reads it and there's nothing on it. In the darkest night, Shifu calls for the town to evacuate. Poe goes with his dad, and as they are evacuating, Poe's dad finally tells him what the secret ingredient is to his noodle recipe. And the secret ingredient is that there is no secret ingredient. People just believe 
that there is a secret ingredient and that's what makes it special. The break into three is kind of in this scene as well. Poe pulls out the dragon scroll and sort of applies this lesson to his journey as the dragon warrior, realizing that there is no secret ingredient for him to be the dragon warrior. He just needs to believe in his own ability and, and trust that this is his place in the universe. The gathering the team section, Pylong arrives and fights Shifu and then Poe arrives after that to take over the fight. Enacting the plan is that Poe and Tai Lung fight over the scroll. High tower surprise here. Tai Lung slams Poe down finally and gets the scroll and he reads what the scroll says. In Dig Down Deep, Poe explains that there is no secret and Tai Lung tries to stun attack him but uh, his his chub protects him. In enacting the new plan, they start to fight again, but what's different here was that Poe is using real kung fu, or the stuff that he learned from Shifu, in addition to sort of his Poe-ness to fight him. So like, the things that people saw as weaknesses at first, Poe is now using his strengths to win in this fight. At the end of this, he wins with the Wuxi finger hold, and we get an inverse of the dream that he had in the beginning where the townsfolk are loving him and the five bow to him. And then in the final image we get Shifu and Po laying in the Jade Palace together and they agree to go get something to eat. So that's my Save the Cat breakdown, but this is still very much about Kung Fu Panda. Um, it's, it's still in a stage where it's like, okay, how is this supposed to help me in writing my own book? What I do after that is I write another Save the Cat breakdown, but instead of thinking about these beats in terms of what is actually happening in the Kung Fu Panda movie, I think about it in terms of from a much broader story level thing, what is this scene accomplished? So again, for example, in the opening image, Po is unskilled and he's nothing like the dream that he had of him being a Kung Fu master. For my general Save the Cat breakdown here, I wrote that in the opening image, the mentee is stuck in his own world. So you see how that's just very broad, that could apply to a lot of things. What I'm trying to get to is like, what is that skeleton of story that exists underneath? So to quickly go over that part, the setup is mostly about setting up what the mentee's skill level is in the thing that they're supposed to be learning throughout the, the movie, in this case, Kung Fu. Theme stated, um, it's going to be pretty story specific, so that's kind of a hard one to make general, but the theme stated really has to do with what does the mentee's relationship to the skill that they're supposed to be learning say about their values. The catalyst is the introduction of a threat to mentee and the world at large. The debate section is how do we deal with this threat? And then the break into two is that mentee is stepping into the role of being the answer to that threat. B story, I wrote that it just depends on the story because again, this is something that is so closely related to the main character's specific flaw that they need to overcome, that you really can't generalize it in a way. But one thing I did note is that it seems like the B-story character is either going to be someone who offers encouragement to the mentee or discouragement to the mentee, at least at this point. In the fun and games, on a downward path, this will be a part where the mentee is failing to progress at learning the skill that he needs to learn. In a false defeat midpoint, um, this is a scene where the mentee gives in to the flaw and by doing that sort of blocks their own ability to solve the problem, which then brings us into an upward path bad guys close in. For here, this is where the mentee trains and progresses the skill. In the all is lost, something prevents the mentee from gaining what they think is necessary to win in the end. And then in the darkest night, this one was hard to nail down again to, but I put that the mentee believes that he's lost his want because of the all is lost. For break into three, I put that mentee hears a lesson that will help him face his flaw and use the skill, which brings us into act three. In gathering the team, the mentee is sort of not necessarily exactly gathering a team to go fight with him, but he's sort of gathering of the skills that have been learned. So the team is the skills that he needs to face the bad guy. Enacting the plan is that he then uses those skills to face the problem and is succeeding. At the high tower, the su surprise, the antagonist gains access to the need. And so the antagonist uh, potentially has the upper hand here. In Dig Down Deep, the 
mentee is going to use the need, aka the lesson that he's learned throughout the story. And then enacting the new plan, the mentee uses new skills and the lesson to defeat the antagonist. And then final image, a mentee is celebrated and returns to new world. That is a walkthrough of how I broke down Kung Fu Panda specifically. I did this for all three films and then was able to use that general breakdown to sort of compare and contrast what was similar, what was different, like what is a genre thing and what is maybe a more story specific thing. And I found some really interesting stuff. Specifically, the one thing that stood out to me was that in all three, the training section is in the bad guys close in section, which to me would not be where that gets placed. My initial instinct would be to put that in fun and games because that feels like the promise of the premise. The other thing that I noticed is all of these had a downward path fun and games and an upward path bad guys close in. All of them at some point learn a lesson from the mentor character that they then put into practice during the act three fight. And that, that part happens in different places in the story so there's not like a specific spot that that happens. Usually there's something that happens during the training section of Bad Guys Close In, but like in Kung Fu Panda, for example, we also get some of that in the initial introduction to the B-story character in, at the very beginning of Act 2. The other thing about Act 3 is that both the enacting the plan and enacting the new plan had to do with just fighting the, the antagonist. In all of them, there's still like a difference between those two where in the enacting the new plan, there's a greater synthesis of demonstrating how the main character has overcome their flaw. And so they're taking the skills that they learn from the mentor, but applying their own sort of uh, flair to them, if that makes sense. So being able to see some of those things can help me see what are more genre staples of this thing and I can then take those and use them as sort of ladders to hang my own story on top of. Being able to take a deeper look at the structure sort of helps guide the way that I can craft my narrative. And it also can show me places to maybe flip genre expectations on their head and do something different, but in a way that's like purposeful, in a way that makes sense to my story and calls back to the tropes that we've seen over and over again. I hope that going into a little bit more detail about that is helpful. I'm excited to have this baseline. I feel like this week has been really successful in terms of doing this research. Also, let me know if you have any specific stuff that you do when you research or prep for starting a new story. I mean, I'm a plotter, I'm an outliner, and so I do a lot of upfront work before I actually dive into the draft, but I would love to hear what you guys do or don't do, or if you just like have an idea and just start writing. That sounds terrifying to me, I could never. That is all I have for this vlog of my writing a middle grade book in two months challenge. The next episode is going to be about my brainstorming outline, so like putting into practice the stuff that I figured out here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye!